or 200 million euros. What would you expect from a striker? A goal a game, maybe every two games, being able to create high XG chances and maybe be on side most of the time? It's no secret that Kylian Mbappe has been lacking in his performances at Real Madrid so far. 11 matches and only 6 goals scored are stats that pale in comparison to what he was previously doing at PSG just 12 months ago. You'd expect that for a respectively the best striker in the world and playing in the best team in the world that he'd be able to compete for the golden boot in the league. But that is just not the case and the question many have been scratching their heads to is why? Why is Kylian Mbappe struggling so much for Real Madrid? An elite player at an elite club. The signing promised lots of goals, lots of wins and lots of trophies. With him joining the club, it was supposed to form an unbreakable attack. Vinny on the left, Rodrigo on the right, and Mbappe as the star number 9. There are no weak points in that specific front three. The expectation was nothing less than Kylian Mbappe and Real Madrid blowing everyone away. But they would not be so quick to do so. Mbappe has been falling short, and specifically his performances on the most recent El Clasico was the highlighting moment. Caught offside 8 times, missed chances, and overall a lackluster outcome for Los Blancos. This doesn't go to show he had been a complete disaster, however, as he has scored his fair share of bangers like this one against Celta Vigo. But the bottom line is, he's struggling at Madrid. Just going over his numbers from last season at PSG, he was the joint top scorer in all of Europe's top 5 leagues with 52 goals in the year. With numbers like that, you'd expect him to be able to transfer his skills somewhat and perform right off the bat. Now, he was playing in League 1, but the circumstances really haven't changed all that much, and I'll get into that a little bit later. The signs started creeping in when Real Madrid played Mallorca, Real Valladolid, and UD Las Palmas. All not very notable names in the football world, but in those three games, Real Madrid were only put up five goals, all of which Mbappe had no significant involvement in. He was simply just having a lollygag on the pitch. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The worrying thing is that Mbappe is coming up short against some not very high quality oppositions. It would be very easy to dismiss this when Mbappe would score 5 goals in the next 4 games. What a turnaround, right? Well, there's a catch though. 3 of those goals would come from a penalty kick, meaning that Mbappe still struggled immensely to score chances from open play. And all that circles back to the main question, why? Why is he struggling so badly? Well, for starters, the quote-unquote design of the club doesn't really suit him so well. You see, back in France, the way football is played happens to just be slightly different. Contrary to Madrid, the Parisian attack was quite wide. It's just a characteristic of French football. And especially in his last season when he was playing with Bradley Barcola and Marco Asensio on the wing, they generally kept wider compared to Rodrigo and Vinicius, especially where they tried to focus on inside play more often than the former pair. Real Madrid got so caught up in the pursuit of signing Kylian Mbappe, that they might not have lost their train of thought when it came into where he would actually play for them. When he first started his football career, he wanted to play as a number 9 and a center forward. But his best years and rise to the limelight came when he played as a winger for AS Monaco. Think about his incredible performance against Manchester City in the Champions League in the 2016-17 season and the 2018 World Cup where he had some of the best performances of his life at that time and he was playing glimpses at the right wing. So there is one of the issues already. His preferred position would be at the left wing and that's just not available for him to play in. Because of the form that Vinicius has been in since last season, there is no moving him out of that position anytime soon. And when they try to fit him into a position that he isn't entirely accustomed to, it just doesn't seem to work. Kylian Mbappe does not have all the necessary skills to become an elite number 9 by the looks of his recent performances. First off, he can't seem to time his runs. The crowd moment of this principle came against El Clasico. Getting caught offside 8 times is not something world class strikers do. Think of the best number 9s in the world in all time. They don't get exposed like this. They're checking their shoulders and know how to use their body position to get the most out of their place on the field. This isn't the case of Kylian Mbappe. As he said in an interview with Real Ferdinand, he likes to rely on his pace and his dribbling to get past his opponents, which is much of the opposite that Real Madrid is used to. Take a look at the past two number nines. Karim Benzema filled this role for 14 years. But when he left for Saudi Arabia, Josuelo came in and occupied that role for a while and did a damn good job, especially for a player of his stature. Both weren't the fastest, but they knew how to use their strength and their body to hold up the play and allow others to join in the attack. That is an area of Mbappe's game that's significantly lacking. More times than not, he's looking to make the run off the shoulder and inside the pitch. Just speed right by the defenders. And Real Madrid is nothing short of dribblers and pace merchants, which means that teams know how to defend against this and they know how to play against it. Real Madrid desperately need that physical element up top. On the tactical side of things, Mbappe makes the team worse. I would never have thought that I'd ever say that. Just think back to when Madrid signed Bellingham last season. Another player who cost hundreds of millions of euros had to prove himself worthy of playtime. By this time last year, he was already scoring clutch goals for Real Madrid, bagging in both his La Liga and UCL debuts in a brace in El Clasico. 
best forward and he still plays an important role in the team. But if we circle back to tactics, it seems that Ancelotti has altered a winning formation just to fit Mbappe into the team. Last season, we saw the dynamic tactics of Real Madrid with them playing a diamond up front and utilizing Rodrigo and Vinicius to make channel runs. And behind them was Bellingham, but with that combo, we saw them unlock a side of the game we haven't seen before, that being Bellingham scoring so many goals. With Mbappe arriving, however, things have changed since then. Get him out of here, son! And real quick, to interrupt the video, if you haven't subscribed to Golasso Football yet, what are you doing? The button is just right down below. It would help me out immensely. Thank you. Having Mbappe included in the structure of the team has altered things. Mbappe was supposed to be the face, the star, the marquee name of the team, whatever you want to call it. But since joining, he has had a hard time performing. So in his place, Vinicius Jr. has been performing instead. Rising to the occasion and taking the headlines, he's been scoring goals like he's always had and hasn't felt the effects of the new system since Mbappe's arrival. Whereas the player it was catered to just doesn't seem to be working out right now. Ever since Mbappe put on the white jersey, Vinicius had been playing with a point to prove. I mean, last season he was the star forward, and Mbappe has taken that title despite not playing so good. But amid all of this hate and controversy, is it right to put all the blame on Mbappe? One user said, Nothing is wrong with Mbappe. He moved from a farmer's league, his comfort zone, to a league that is much more technical and to a team where players can't be bigger than the club. This brings us back to a couple years when Mbappe was bargaining some of the highest wages PSG has ever given out. The statement, no player was ever bigger than the club, was completely wrong in that situation. He practically owned it. And so by nature, he'll have to adapt to La Liga and Real Madrid. It has been much more difficult for him to use his biggest strength as a player in the likes of his pace and dribbling because La Liga is generally tighter in their formations and isn't going to allow for a player to pace abuse them. We're talking about a player who spent his entire career in one country, one league across multiple clubs. So when you throw any human for that matter in any new environment, It'll take them time to adapt to the new circumstances. But hell, even in the international breaks, the games he played for France, he was struggling as well. He opted out of playing the last two fixtures against Belgium and Israel because, quote, he only wanted to focus on major international fixtures to improve his chances of winning a Ballon d'Or. Now, statistically, he hasn't been that bad, but I said it with half the truth. Ever since his debut season, the current year is his lowest XG in terms of goals per 90 that he has ever recorded. He has taken 24 shots on target so far, but it's his conversion rate that has gone down tremendously. As it stands, it's only around 25%. Comparatively, Robert Lewandowski, the top scorer in the league, has a 38% conversion rate, proving that he's been miles more clinical with his chances. So in order for Mbappe to really succeed, I believe he needs to take pages out of Kareem Benzema's book, Look at what Holland is doing. Harry Kane, there are so many players he could use to adjust his play stuff, and his results could skyrocket if he makes a few tweaks. So when Mbappe is bringing these slow results, fans are going to turn on somebody. Don't be surprised if it's Mbappe. Another factor I think gets overlooked is when it comes to what Real Madrid are missing in the midfield. Just think about what Tony Cruz brought to the club for several years. A one-of-a-kind player with an unmatched ability to move the ball and dictate the speed of play, and just hit eyes all over the field. So linking him up with a player like Mbappe could have been incredibly lucrative. In his place now is Bellingham or Valverde, but they can't do what Tony Cruz could. At the end of the day, I think it's the team that needs to address around Mbappe and not the other way around. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.